Hello and welcome again. Today I'm making grilled garlic basil shrimp. This recipe is extremely simple and only requires a handful of basic ingredients. So let's dive right in. The first step is to make the marinade and for that I suggest using a mortar and pestle. Yes, now's the time you can finally open that box from your wedding registry 15 years ago, provided you haven't regifted it to a coworker. Nevertheless, as you can see, I'm getting to work on a couple cloves of garlic. I'm aiming for a very smooth paste, which is something you simply cannot get out of a food processor. I also recommend using a large rough granite mortar like this. It's so heavy that it barely moves around on the counter. It's also unpolished, which makes it very abrasive and better for grinding. A little pinch of salt will also help with the grinding, but also draw the water out of the garlic. In just a few minutes, you'll see the clumps turn into a thick, smooth cream. At that point, it's time to add the fresh basil. A handful should do. Once again, smash it to smithereens. Grinding it by hand like this is really going to break down a lot of those cell walls and release the maximum amount of flavor into the marinade. Now you may have noticed that this is heading in the direction of a pesto. However, instead of adding Parmesan cheese, I'm going to throw in some lime zest. And if you're wondering why it looks yellow instead of green, let's just say I was lucky to get any limes at all amidst this current state of affairs. But I digress. I recommend using only the zest for the marinade. It'll contain lots of bright citrusy flavor without the acid of the juice. Marinating seafood in citric acid will denature the proteins and cause it to turn opaque, like in ceviche. That's not what I want here. Because this is a wet marinade, I'm adding a couple tablespoons of flavorful extra virgin olive oil. Give it a thorough mix. I want the oil to be properly infused with the other ingredients. Typically, when seasoning meat, I prefer adding the salt separately from the other ingredients, which gives me better control. However, shrimp requires so little salt that I'm comfortable including it directly in the marinade. Add a couple pinches until it tastes just a bit salty. Once you're done, remove half the mixture into a separate bowl and set aside in the fridge. We'll use that to make a finishing sauce at the end. Now I'll be completely honest. I totally forgot that step and added all the marinade in with the shrimp. This is what happens when you decide to make cooking videos after an entire day of work. Minor stumble though. The more you cook, the more you learn creative four-letter words. My personal preference for grilled shrimp are these peeled and deveined 1620s. That number just means 16 to 20 shrimp per pound, which gives you a good idea of their size. A smaller number would indicate larger shrimp. Give this all a thorough mix and refrigerate overnight, if not, at least a minimum of two hours. Okay, so time for grilling. As we all know, raw charcoal is the best for flavor, but it can be a pain to work with at times. If you don't have a chimney starter, then do yourself a favor and get one. This thin metal bucket is the best thing I've ever used for lighting coals. And while it's only meant as a starter, I'm going to place my grill grate directly over it. I'm scoring a couple benefits with this technique. Firstly, I can reduce the amount of coals I need. A sizable portion of charcoal is always lost in getting the bundle lit and up to temperature. In here, I'm grilling while only half the heap is lit. That way I could cook quickly with minimal wastage. Secondly, you get the highest temperature when the coals are packed together in a confined space. The heat coming out of here is like the back of a jet engine. If I were to pour out this small amount onto the base of the grill, I'd immediately lose 3 to 400 degrees. And thirdly, shrimp cook very quickly. And if left too long over the heat, they turn tough and rubbery. What I'm trying to do is maximize the amount of char for the minimum amount of cooking time. This way, I get a perfect sear on the outside while the shrimp remain tender and moist on the inside. 
Though I've significantly reduced my available grilling area, I can work more quickly in smaller batches. About a minute per side should be more than adequate, so whatever you do, don't walk away from here until they're done. With all the shrimp nicely grilled, it's time for serving. The final step is to drizzle that finishing sauce. So, unlike me, hopefully you remember to keep some of that initial marinade. If not, just make a new batch. And this time, add a couple tablespoons of fresh lime juice. We want a bright acidic kick to cut through the bitterness of the char. The raw basil also adds a fresh highlight of color. This dish looks impressive on a platter for sharing with guests, and it's packed with tons of flavor. So anyway, I hope you give this one a try, and until next time, have a good night and keep safe.